I'm here to offer you a new meaning for this word, rare. And to do this, I need to introduce an acronym that you've heard of, CRISPR. It's a method for gene editing, that's right, changing DNA on demand that was invented here at UC Berkeley by my colleague, Dr. Jennifer Doudna. She won the Nobel Prize for this and founded the Innovative Genomics Institute, where I work. The new meaning comes out at the intersection between these two words and refers to genetic disease, such as one that is affecting the family of this woman who wrote to Dr. Doudna to say, I know this is a long shot, but I wanted to reach out to you as all my research into gene editing seems to lead to you. I have three boys and two of them have been diagnosed with a degenerative neurologic condition, hereditary spastic paraplegia type 15. It affects not only mobility, but cognitive, bladder bowel control, speech, swallowing. It's extremely debilitating and watching my sons disintegrate before my eyes is heartbreaking. This person who wrote to Dr. Doudna on New Year's Eve has a different rare genetic disease. They write, I'm 36 years old and time is running out for me. A mutation in a gene has caused a devastating disease in every member of my family who has it. I have the same mutation. They continue, I would be a willing participant in a CRISPR clinical trial. I really encourage you to read about the devastation that such genetic disease can impose on people with them and their families in this article in the New York Times about Monica Kuhnratz and her daughter Chelsea, who has Rett syndrome. Now, the rare genetic disease community has a poster child. Her name is Mila. Her mom, Julia Vitarello, led a heroic effort to inspire physicians and scientists to build a medicine a bespoke therapy just for that gene mutation that was killing her daughter. That's amazing, but that is one disease out of 5,000. What can we do about this? We are not powerless. Let me introduce you to your DNA. This is 12 letters of it, the familiar double helix. Your actual DNA is a lot longer. Here you can see about 0.1% of it, it's six billion letters long. Tragically, even a single typo in this long genetic text can cause devastating disease. For example, sickle cell anemia. Miles Davis suffered from it. 100,000 of our fellow Americans have it, and their life expectancy is in the mid-40s. Or bubble boy disease. It killed this child, his name was David Vetter, the original bubble boy. Left untreated, this disease will kill everyone who has it before age one. And so it is here that I need to inspire in you to revise the meaning of the word rare as it relates to genetic disease. Yes, each such disease is rare individually, but in aggregate, 200 million of our fellow human beings have one of 5,000 different genetic diseases. About 10% of them affect the immune system, such as adenosine deaminase deficient severe combined immune deficiency that this tiny little human had. And I say had because this baby has been cured by Dr. Donald Cohen of the University of California, Los Angeles, and his team using a method called gene therapy. Along with 49 other children on this clinical trial, this little guy would have died for sure. But Dr. Cohn took a bit of his bone marrow stem cells, then used a virus to add back a normal copy of the gene that was defective, and then put the stem cells back in. And what happened to these 50 children? They were all cured. A magnificent, magnificent achievement for biomedicine and, of course, for the patients and their families. I am sad to say, folks, nobody should be doing a victory lap about this, and here is why. In order to make this life-saving therapy available to all, it was then licensed to a for-profit entity. And then the community watched in horror 
as that company, exact quote, abandoned it because it didn't represent a viable commercial opportunity. Can you just imagine telling the parents of a one-year-old child dying of horrible infections that their kid does not represent, quote, a viable commercial opportunity? So it's not all bad. The state of California, through the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine, provided Dr. Cohn's team with $6 million to continue treating children. Sadly, the cold light of commercial reality shines a deeply unfavorable light on the situation. A for-profit biotech called Bluebird Bio developed a gene therapy treatment for sickle cell disease, and they were going to charge $2 million for it. They were unable to get European governments to pay that much, and rather than take a price cut, they just left the European market. And recently, we were all sad to find out that the company is about to go potentially out of business, making money on therapies for such rare diseases is not simple. And so, folks, the situation is dire, and the issue is stark. Rare genetic disease is not rare. What is rare are cures for them. And when these cures exist for about 10 out of 5,000, there are 2 million a patient, and the rest are, quote, not commercially viable. I would not be standing here if we did not have a path forward. And the solution that we aim to bring here is gene editing with CRISPR. So gene therapy that I told you about, using a virus to put a gene back, really works, but it is expensive and can be unpredictable. So by way of an analogy, gene therapy is like having a car with a flat tire and adding another wheel. Gene editing is repairing the flat. It's like having a word processor for your DNA. And the engine that powers gene editing is this wonderful molecule, CRISPR. Its power comes from the fact that it is relatively simple to engineer it to edit a gene of interest. How simple? I'll explain it to you in under one minute. Inside the CRISPR molecule is a snippet of a nucleic acid that's like a location code. It tells CRISPR where to go in human DNA to repair a broken gene. Let me show you how. Let's say you have this gene and it needs fixing, and you highlight 20 letters, only 20, of that gene, and you arm CRISPR with a tiny stretch of ribonucleic acid, RNA, that is a match to that 20-letter genetic word. CRISPR takes this location code, goes inside your cells, finds the gene that is the match, and this is why it's called gene editing. It's literally like clicking with a mouse on a bit of genetic text that you want changed. It makes a precise cut in your DNA to mark it for editing. And the amazing thing about gene editing, that this one mouse click, this precise cut in the DNA, can be used to get rid of a bad copy of a gene, such as, for example, the one that's threatening the life of that 36-year-old in Colorado, or to repair a gene, such as the one that is the two, those two sons in that family are suffering from with paraplegia. Such CRISPR cures are not hypothetical. There are several for-profit biotechnology companies that have used CRISPR to treat people including this man with severe genetic diseases of the nerve and the heart, this person with congenital blindness, and this woman, Victoria Gray. She had sickle cell disease. Had, because after being CRISPR gene edited, she's feeling healthy again. And yet again, we're faced with a stark fact that only a tiny fraction of such diseases are being pursued in the for-profit sector. And folks, when they get commercialized, they will be priced at $2 million a person. This is wrong. We have to fix this. This is a matter of health justice. What does it mean to act in the name of health justice? Well, I think Amanda Gorman said it best. We have to merge mercy with might and might with right. All of this hits me very hard on a personal level, 
Before joining Jennifer Doudna here at Berkeley, I was a team leader at a biotechnology company here called Sangamo Therapeutics. And my team developed the gene editing approach for sickle that worked in the clinic. So let me tell you about one person. This is a 35-year-old woman with sickle cell disease. She had 10 episodes of severe pain in the two years before treatment. But then her physicians took her blood stem cells, then used gene editing to repair them and gave her the cells back. Two years after gene editing, this person is pain-free. My older daughter is also an editor, but of books, not of genes. And she said to me, Dad, what does it feel like to develop a treatment, a curative treatment for a devastating illness? I didn't know what to say, and I, I, I thought about it, and I realized it feels like a call to action. We have to make such cures available to all who need them. And so this passion for health justice brought me to the IGI. Its vision, as enunciated by Jennifer, is that we have a responsibility to pursue CRISPR's enormous potential to achieve previously impossible solutions to some of the world's biggest challenges, solutions that will be available to anyone. So at the IGI, we innovate across the entire problem space of building a CRISPR cure, and this is key we put them to real-world testing. And all of that's done in what I'm going to call Avengers mode. What does that mean? It means that you bring together superheroes with non-overlapping superpowers. Let me show you some real Avengers. We brought together biochemists, bioengineers, neurobiologists, computational biologists into a team to build a CRISPR treatment for neurodegeneration. We gathered such a team for sickle cell disease. We teamed up with stem cell biologists and physicians to build a CRISPR that would help safely treat ovarian cancer. And with physicians and scientists at UCSF and the Gladstone to build a CRISPR for one individual who suffers from severe autoimmune disorders. We are passionate about putting our innovation into the real world. In fact, the world's only CRISPR gene editing trial that is all academic and all nonprofit is a partnership between the IGI and leading physicians at UCSF, Dr. Mark Walters, and UCLA, Dr. Cohn. Our goal? To develop a scalable and equitable treatment for sickle cell disease. I mentioned that nearly 10% of genetic disease breaks the immune system. We can't have kids live in bubbles. So we teamed up with Dr. Jennifer Puck, Dr. Mort Cowan, and built a team of Avenger-style superheroes in a, quote, it takes a village to save a child approach in building a platform approach to CRISPR cures in immune disease. What does that mean, platform approach? Well, our initial focus, again driven by the cause of health justice, is a genetic disease of the immune system called Artemis Skid. It disproportionately and tragically affects children of the Navajo Nation in part because of the devastating injustice the population bottleneck imposed upon them way back in the 19th century. We cannot right that wrong, but we can build a CRISPR to treat these children. And key to our vision is that the way we're going to do this will be a recipe not only to treat kids with Artemis Skid, but will be a scalable, and this is key, affordable approach to all genetic diseases of the immune system. I want to be clear, this is going to be very hard. We are inspired by the United States Marine Corps, who say, courage is not going into a room full of fear and danger unafraid. It is being afraid and still going in. We cannot do this alone. If you're asking yourself, how can I get involved? Well whether you want to connect with AGI science, contribute to it, support it, or whether if your family is affected by genetic disease, you can learn on the IGI website about how CRISPR works, CRISPR clinical trials, and I encourage you to find your own exclamation point of a solution to the equation of U plus CRISPR. Thank you.